guys and welcome back to another Mystery Monday video on my channel. Today I am coming back with another missing persons case because a lot of you guys have actually been requesting these cases more often lately. I used to do a lot of these on my channel but kind of steered away from them for the last little while. So today I thought I would come back strong with another missing persons case that is not only one missing person but is actually Two. So with that all being said, let's get right into today's video. Terry Lee Westerfield, who was 11 years old at the time, and his younger brother Alan John Westerfield, who was 7 at the time, were the sons of Margaret and Mel Westerfield. Now Margaret and Mel had actually gotten a divorce several years earlier before this case had taken place, and Margaret had actually remarried but she was actually separated from the man who she was remarried to, and this man's name was Carl Bach. Now, he will be a big part of this case later on, so that is a name you're just going to want to keep in your mind. So Margaret was a single mother to both of the boys, and they were all living in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Both of the boys, Alan and Terry, were described as being your average, typical little kids. They were really adventurous, really curious, and with not much to do in Fayetteville, they actually really, really enjoyed going to the movie theater, and they did that quite often because both boys were just absolutely fascinated by movies. On September 12th, 1964, Margaret actually got called into work, so she called her babysitter, Barbara Temple, who was a young girl who babysat the boys quite often. She was pretty close to Terry and Alan because again, she did babysit them on a regular basis. So this was just your average day. Things were going quite normal at the home until 12 p.m. when Carl unexpectedly showed up. He then proceeded to tell Barbara that he was there now and he would watch the boys for the rest of the day and that she could leave. But again, Barbara was a regular babysitter for Margaret and she watched these boys quite often, so she had known about the separation between Carl and Margaret and she thought that it was pretty odd that he showed up there and if he had been planning on coming and Margaret had known about it, you would think that Margaret would have told her, so she just found this a little bit odd and she didn't quite feel comfortable leaving the boys alone with Carl. But something that I should have mentioned earlier on in this case is that Carl was actually a military police officer, so he was very very, very intimidating and authoritative. And because of this, along with the fact that Carl was super, super persistent on telling Barbara to go home, around 12.30 p.m., Barbara did just that. She packed up her things and left the boys alone with Carl. And around that same time, between 12.30 and 1 p.m., Alan was actually seen by another neighbor outside riding his bike. Around the time that Alan was seen outside riding his bike, one of Terry's friends actually came to the family home to knock on the door to ask if Terry could come out to play. And that is when Carl had opened the door, he didn't allow this child to see or speak to Terry, and he just told him that Terry was being punished and he would not be able to come outside. Now, given the circumstances of this case, this is extremely strange. Obviously, the reason why Terry was being punished is completely unknown, but again, given the circumstances of the fact that Carl and Margaret were separated, there was no need for Carl to even be at the home, the entire situation is just extremely unsettling, and you will see why later on in the case. Carl would later say that around 4 p.m. that day, he drove Terry and Alan down to the local movie theater. He said that he drove the boys down there because Terry had asked him to take them there to see a double, double feature film. The first film was called No Name on the Bullet, and the second film was called The Atomic Man. Around 5 p.m. is when Margaret arrived home back to her house, and she was alarmed to find Carl sitting in her living room. Not only that, but she was extra alarmed to find that it didn't appear as if the boys were home. That is when Carl told her that he had taken the boys down to the movie theater. Now, Margaret obviously at this point was very, very angry. She was angry that Carl had told the babysitter she could leave. He was angry that she, he had come to her house without her permission. He was angry that she had taken the boys to the movie theater without her permission. She was just really riled up, so the two then began to argue. The argument continued to go on for a little while, but Carl was again a very persistent man and he pretty much told Margaret that he knew the boys wouldn't be out of the movie for the next couple hours and he pretty much was going to do her a favor basically and pick the boys up from the movie theater and watch them for the rest of the night. Basically almost seeming to me like he was kind of telling Margaret like he was doing her a favor. Like he would watch the boys, she could go out and do her own thing, he would babysit, that kind of deal. So Margaret then left and went out for the night. 
Margaret ended up staying out until 1 a.m. the following morning, and when she arrived home, she was expecting to find both of her sons in bed and Carl there watching them, but once she got into the house, she noticed that only Carl was in the home, meaning that the two boys were not there. This is when Carl proceeded to tell Margaret that he went down to the movie theater around 7.30 p.m. to pick up the boys. He waited for them on the corner, which is what they had allegedly planned to do. They planned to meet on the corner where Carl was waiting for them, and he waited there until 9.30 p.m., but when the boys still never showed up, that is when he got back into his car and proceeded to go back to Margaret's home. He then tried to seemingly pass the blame off to Margaret, kind of accusing her and being like, well, did you pick them up? But of course, Margaret didn't, and the boys were now missing. After finding out that her sons had been missing, Margaret proceeded to immediately phone the police. And because of how serious this case was, how young the boys were, how long it had been since anybody had seen them, and all of that, police actually jumped on this case very, very quickly, which I do have to say is quite impressive because a lot of times in these kinds of cases, the police just don't do the best job that they could have. But it is stated over and over again in this case that they were really doing a very good job. So the official missing persons case for both Terry and Alan was actually made on September 13th because again, remember, Margaret didn't get home that night until 1 a.m. And up until that point, she thought that they were in safe care, but they obviously were not. So again, it doesn't take a genius to see that something in Carl's story wasn't adding up and the investigators caught on to this very, very quickly. So he quickly became the main suspect in this investigation. Carl was interviewed multiple times over the following years because like I said already, his story of dropping the boys at the movies just didn't make sense and waiting outside for them and them never coming out and then going home and like not taking any action to be like, these kids are missing really doesn't make any sense. And it is especially strange because again, he had told one of Terry's friends that Terry couldn't come out to play because he was being punished. Taking the boys to the movies because Terry had asked him to doesn't seem like a punishment. That doesn't seem like something you do after punishing a child. You're then going to reward them. It doesn't make absolutely any sense. Investigators in this case also interviewed all of the employees at the movie theater. Now, lucky for them, um, Alan and Terry again were regulars at this movie theater. They went there all the time, they loved going there, they loved movies, so they hung out at this movie theater quite often. And a lot of the employees at the movie theater actually knew both of the boys by name. And those who didn't know Terry and Alan by name actually knew the boys well enough to be able to recognize their face. And all of the employees that were working on the night when Carl said that he had dropped the boys off at the movie theater claimed that they had never seen the boys and that they weren't ever there that night. Another thing that I want to mention is that Terry and Alan actually had this rule type deal thing with their mother where they could go to the movies by themselves. She trusted Terry to watch Alan and the boys to kind of look out for each other during the movie. So she would let them go to the movie theater on their own. The only rule was that they had to wait inside the movie theater for her to come and get them and take them home. So they were not to wait outside. They were not to leave the movie theater until she was there to get them. Now, again, Carl had told the boys that he would meet them on the corner. He said that he had waited there for over two hours and the boys never showed up. Don't you think that if you had young children going to a movie by themselves, you told them you'd meet them in one area and they didn't show up, you'd then go to the theater and ask the employees if they'd seen them? That is personally just what I think I would do and none of the employees who were working in the theater that night even claimed to have any encounters with Carl. They said they never even seen him enter the theater. The last sighting of Terry Westerfield that is confirmed was by Barbara Temple, who again was the babysitter, and she'd actually seen Terry before she had left the home. The last confirmed sighting of Alan Westerfield was around 12.30 to 1 p.m. when that neighbor saw him out riding his bike. I feel like in this case it is pretty obvious, but I do still just want to mention that Carl Bach does remain the main suspect in this case. Shortly after the boys went missing, Margaret and Carl Bach's separation was finalized, and sadly, Margaret Westerfield actually spent some time in a mental hospital following the disappearance of her boys. 
Now, I'm not really sure if the time that she had spent in the mental hospital had anything to do with their disappearance, although I do think that it probably did. I feel like if you have young children and they get taken from you and there is no explanation, that is enough to give absolutely anybody mental health issues. The boy's father, Mel Westerfield, was cleared as a suspect very, very early on in this case and his life was completely torn apart by the fact that his sons had been missing. He then went on to devote his entire life to finding his boys, but sadly in 1978, he actually ended up taking his own life after losing hope on ever finding out what happened to his sons. To make things just that much more sickening within this case is Carl Bach actually went on to do a few interviews not only with investigators but with writers and journalists and things like that after the boys had disappeared and the way that he talks about both Terry and Alan is just absolutely disgusting. He doesn't like talk about them like they were innocent children. He refers to them as them boys like really aggressively and almost like I don't know, it's just, he just comes across really, really like mean, like he doesn't care. It's just really sickening and unsettling to hear a grown man talk about two young children who are missing in such like a degrading manner. The most recent comment on this case was actually by both Terry and Alan's uncle, who says that he does not believe that the boys are with us anymore and he does believe that Carl Bach is responsible. He said that he believes that for whatever reason, this entire case was a cover-up and he believes that it was due to Carl's high ranking in the military. Sadly, Terry and Alan Westerfield do still remain missing to this day and this case does remain unsolved, but if the boys are still alive today, they would both be senior citizens. My heart sincerely goes out to the Westerfield family and anybody else who was affected by this case. It is just so, so, so sickening. It just really makes me sick, this case. It really, really, truly makes me sick. It makes me feel sick. And I just can't even imagine the heartbreak that Margaret and Mel and anybody who was close to these boys must have gone through during this case. And for it to still remain open, even though it seems like the answers are so obvious and in your face, is just so, so, so frustrating. But guys, that brings us to the end of this video. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to comment down below what you'd like to see in my future videos and don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so that you don't miss any future videos from me. Thank you so, so, so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys!